Another thing that happens during an earthquake is soil liquefaction. Liquefaction means something turns to liquid. In this case, the very ground you might be standing on. Here's how you can experiment with soil liquefaction. All you need is a plastic container and some water, not very much, barely enough to cover the bottom of the container because what you're gonna put in next is sand. And you wanna put it in there and spread it around. Just add enough sand so it just starts to turn dry on the very last layer. So here is a house that I'm gonna put on top. And now I will simulate an earthquake. The water rises up and it sort of turns to liquid. Soil liquefaction. And heavy things like houses and cars, they tend to sink like that. And then the soil rehardens and everybody's houses are stuck in the mud. Now, let's max it out. This is a giant tub of sand and water, and this is a vibrating platform that will simulate an earthquake. Now, as you can see, this sand is totally solid. I can jump all around on this sand, no problem. But when I turn on the vibrating table and simulate an earthquake, things will change. The vibrations bring the water below the sand to the surface and cause the sand particles to separate. What was solid now turns to liquid in my simulated earthquake, and I start to sink. I'm up to my shins! And there you go, soil liquefaction! Hey, look at that. It's totally solid. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Soil liquefaction! I am totally... Uh-oh. You know what I realized? When it stops vibrating, it really becomes solid again. And it's very tough to... Well, there, there you go. Soil liquefaction. I'm, uh... I'm really kind of stuck in here. I... Here's an experiment you can do to impress the adults in your house. You need three glasses, all of equal height, and three knives, not sharp knives, the dull knives you use, maybe the ones you use at dinner time. Take your three knives and put them in a triangle, all equally spaced out. Then move the knives together to make a little triangle, right like that. Then what you wanna do is you wanna carefully arrange the knives so each knife is going above one knife and below another knife. So there we go. Then you wanna take this careful pattern that you created and you wanna put it on top of your three glasses. One where each handle of the knives are gonna be. And if you place it carefully and you've done the over-unders correctly, it will stay up. Pretty amazing, the knives support their own weight. But they don't just support their own weight, they can support a lot more weight too. Pretty amazing, right? This is a great experiment. It's also something really interesting that we can max out. Come on. And here you go, the maxed out knife balance. I've got three pieces of lumber and three barrels. And as you can see, the pattern is exactly the same. Under, over, under, over, under, over. Ha ha. So the question is, how much faith do I have in science? Ah! It totally supports my weight. I know it's going to work because I know that a two by four, which is the kind of lumber I'm using, can hold up my weight. So that means the structure can support me. <laughs> Science! You know what the cool thing is? The cool thing is that even though it's holding me up, each one of these pieces of wood is only up because it's supported by the others. You pull one out and... It all falls apart. Back to our earthquake building. Ann and I tried a few different designs and they each got a little better. But now we're wondering what would happen if we built the tower out of very flexible material. We used some plastic tubing and attached the wood with bungee cords, which are like big elastics. Wow, okay, so looks good. So let's test it. Okay. And sure enough, when we start shaking it, the tower holds up to as much shaking as we can give it. Wait. What? 
Aren't we missing something? Oh, yeah, we're missing the weight at the top. Of course. So I think we need to try it again. So we add the weight to the top, and then everything changes. Oh, oh no. Look at it twist. Oh, dear. It's twisted. A flexible go. tower is great until you try to put a weight at the top. And then it just seems <laughs> really unstable. Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. It's totally bent. It didn't break at all. It just fell over. Yeah, it couldn't even support the weight. So it was almost too flexible. So I guess we should go back to a more rigid design. Mm -hmm. But what if we change the shape a little bit? Because mm -hmm. you know what I was thinking. This is a very stable shape. Mm -hmm. Triangle, because triangles are really strong. What about um, we, we make an X? Like a triangle within a triangle. Triangle, and then triangle. So that really reinforces all of the shaking, like all the motion. We'll never know until we try. All right. Ann and I have tried solid towers and flexible towers. And nothing has worked fantastically yet with a big weight on the top. Having a big weight on the top of our tower means we need something that will resist the movement of that weight. So now we're going to start with a triangle. Unlike a rectangle, triangles are very stable. A wider base keeps the structure from swaying too much. And cross braces in the middle mean that there are other triangles within our triangle. All the better to resist movement. Thank you. After Ann and I built our tower, we added the weight to the top, secured it to the base, and tried it out. OK, here we go. Ooh. It's looking good. No problem. It's not twisting. It's, it's not, not even leaning. Not even creaking. No, it looks really good. Wow, this one is really solid. As you can see, this tower is way more solid than our square tower or the flexible tower. Okay, look at that. Like, if that's not an earthquake, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at the way the ground is moving. I don't know if we can shake it much more than this. Faster. Our triangular tower is up past a level of shaking that made the other towers collapse. Now it's time to max out the shaking. There's only one level of shaking that we can do above this. What's that? We shake from either side. We give it all we have. The floor was bouncing from side to side, the tower was tilting and was totally solid. It's still holding strong. In fact, Anne and I wore out before the building showed any signs of falling over. I think we've done it. Woo! Nice yeah. job. Nice. <laughs> Science Max experiments at large earthquake proof building. I mean, come on. That was impressive. I like it. Here's what I don't get. This is heavy, but I can still pick it up and throw it. Yeah. An airplane is way heavier. I could never pick up an airplane, but that can fly. And that's because airplanes have engines, so it has a constant source of thrust. When we throw it, we just have an initial source of thrust. So we're throwing it. Eventually, loses its energy. Therefore, it falls to the ground. Falls. I see. So we need something that's light. Light. And something that's strong. And strong. OK, well, let's see what we can find. All right. Sonia and I try a plastic tube and some heavy-duty paper. We make hoops and attach them with some duct tape and run outside to try it out. Hoop lighter dance! Okay. Three, two, one! Yeah! Woo That's pretty good! That was pretty amazing! Good. Let's try that again. Here we go. I throw the hoop glider, and although it doesn't keep flying forever, it goes much further than our first version, and also further than I could have just thrown the pipe by itself. That's pretty good! So we've done a good job of making something that flies. Why don't we make a couple different kinds out of different materials, and we'll see if we can get one that flies even better than this. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, OK, let's do it. <laughs> Sony and I have created a pretty good maxed out hoop glider, but we wanted to see if different materials would make an even better one. Sonia made a much lighter version. This time I used cardboard. And I, I made this, made a slightly heavier one. Let's do it. OK, three, yeah. two, one, go! Not bad. My turn. Here we go. OK. Yeah. 
<laughs> that didn't really go very far at all, did it? No. Okay, so now we can measure it against the one that we threw before. And see, that went pretty far. This went pretty far to see yeah. if we've got a better design here. Here we go. Right? Wow. Awesome. So, heavy one, no. Light one, no. Interesting. Uh, no. This design seems to be the best one. I keep thinking about how you were talking about thrust. Yep. All the thrust that we can put in is just what we can put in with one throw. Yeah. What if we could give it more thrust than that? How can we do that? Um, I don't know, like some sort of uh, slingshot or something. Like, a, it'd have to be a pretty big slingshot. A pretty though. big slingshot. Do you but think I we can think make that a, sounds great, though. I think we make a big slingshot for this? Why not? OK, high five. Let's All do right. it. Our maxed out hoop glider was working pretty yeah. well. That was pretty amazing. Good. But we could only give it so much thrust by throwing it. Yeah. So we came up with the perfect Science Max solution. Our giant slingshot! <laughs> All right. We pull the bungee cord back and hook it onto our hoop glider. I am ready to fire. Count me down. Three, two, launch it! <laughs> Our slingshot is amazing. By giving the glider more thrust, that is, more energy at the beginning so it's going faster when we launch it, the glider soars through the air and flies a long way. That was great! So there you go, giant hoop glider! Yeah! Science Max, experiments at large, nicely done. Nice. What more could you ask for? Well, it's my turn! Hey, see you next time! Ha, 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 ha.